assigned to do a project over one of our favorite works of art, I decided to do The Last of Us, a story of Joel and Ellie and the relationship that is formed between them through traumatizing events. I do feel the need to put a warning here for graphic content, language, and such, not to mention spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't played the game yet. That being said, let's get into it. When we first meet Joel, it's established that he's a single father to Sarah, and that they have a fantastic relationship. What are you still doing up? It's late. Oh God, what time is it? It's way past your bedtime. But it's still today. Honey, please, not right now. I do not have the energy for this. Here. What's this? Your birthday? You kept complaining about your broken watch. So I figured, you know. You like it? Uh, honey, this is... It's what? nice, but I... I think it's stuck. It's not... What? No, 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 no. Oh, ha, ha. Where did you get the money for this? Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. Oh, good. You started helping out with the mortgage then. Yeah, you wish. Unfortunately, things are about to take a dark turn for Joel and Sarah. Sarah wakes up later to a phone call from her Uncle Tommy, Joel's brother saying that he needs to speak to Joel immediately, and his phone cuts off, leaving her in the dark. She goes to his room to try to find him, and sees the news is on, and talking about a widespread panic and mass hysteria. She goes to the window. She's met with the sight and sound of an explosion about a mile away. She runs downstairs to try to find Joel, who is seen re-entering the house, loading a weapon, saying that something is wrong with the neighbors. Jimmy! Dad! Honey, come here! Come here! Jimmy! Jimmy! Jimmy, I am warning you! No! Tommy arrives in his pickup in true country fashion, and he, Joel, and Sarah attempt to flee the situation. With no clear path in the chaos, they are forced to abandon their vehicle and have to run through this city being attacked by what seems like psychopaths on foot. These attackers would later become known as the infected, as that is exactly what they are. By an actual fungus <laughs> in our world, uh, known as cordyceps for short, that has been known to affect ants. It gets in your brain and just makes you want to infect everyone else. Here's how to make a zombie ant. But we're humans, not ants. So how it affects us is we become something like this, which is called a clicker. The fungus in the brain will come all the way out of the eye sockets, effectively blinding the person, and they have to make this clicking noise to resonate sound throughout the room to try to find their prey. Like a bat! Or something. But of course, where there's danger, there are people ready to stop danger. Like the military. You know. Little martial law here. Little quarantine there. Anybody who's infected, shot on sight. Fantastic. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Tommy, Sarah, and Joel are trying to flee the city. And the military have arrived but their only mission is to eradicate since they don't know what they're dealing with. Sir, there's a little girl. But... Yes, sir. Somebody, we've just been through hell. Okay, we just need... Oh, no. Sarah. Move your hands, babe. I know, baby, I know. Listen to me, I know this hurts. You're gonna be okay, baby, stay with me. All right, I'm gonna pick you up. I know, baby, I know it hurts. 
Come on, baby, please. I know, baby. I know. Sarah. Baby. This is the first emotional arc of Joel's journey. The next time we see him, he's much older. We establish that he has a partner that he's been running with for years named Tess, and they do whatever it is they need to do to survive, including buying guns from people like this. Needless to say, the deal with Shady Guy 1 here does not end well. He actually intended to sell guns that were not his. Instead, they belong to the Fireflies, who are the rebels to the opposing military forces empire. Shortly after killing the man that betrayed them, they are met by the leader of the Fireflies, Marlene, who explains that the guns belong to them. Of course, that leads to a conflict of interest, because as far as Tess is concerned, they gave everything they had to get these guns. However, a sympathetic Marlene does have a job that she needs done. Enter Ellie, a nervous young girl with an attitude who needs to get from point A to point B for whatever reason. Tess realizes the reason that she's so important is because she has been exposed to the virus but is not infected. Whereas Ellie had been exposed for weeks, Tess has been exposed for only hours, and her virus was already spreading quickly. She intends to sacrifice herself so Joel and Ellie can get away from the military forces that are chasing them down. With his only friend in the world's sacrifice, they are now left with only each other and their journey ahead. The emotionally disconnected Joel has a lot of trouble not seeing Sarah in Ellie and eventually becomes closer to her than he's comfortable with. He realizes that he doesn't believe he's capable of protecting her, possibly because of what happened to Sarah. As it turns out, Tommy and his wife are set up. Uh, they have a camp that they defend by a dam and Joel thinks the best way for Ellie to be safe is if he leaves her there. Ellie gathers from this that he does not want her around after overhearing the conversation and runs away. Joel does find her not too far away in an abandoned home. Not her, you know. What? Maria told me about Sarah. Ellie? And... You are treading on some Mighty thin ice here. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel, but I have lost people too. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. After the relationship develops more through these conversations, he can't bring himself to leave her, and he decides to try to see it through and get her all the way to the Firefly camp. This story becomes known as a tale of mirrors from this point on, as there are many moments that are reminiscent of his relationship with Sarah, such as the term baby girl he used with Sarah comes out whenever he saves Ellie from a cannibalistic psychopath who almost kills her. You're my baby girl. Look, look. It's me. He tried to... Oh, baby girl. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Joel does, in fact, get her all the way to the Fireflies, 
who have set up in a hospital. And these doctors are to find a cure using her blood. What Joel didn't know, and Marlene did, is that she was never intended to survive this procedure. Once Joel finds out about this, he changes his mind about everything and decides to get her out. Regardless of if the world never sees a cure, the only thing he knows is that he is getting her out. He's met at the ground floor off an elevator by Marlene, who was tracking his movement and knew that he would end up down here as it was the best escape for him. She even puts her gun down at one point and decides to try to say to him that we can still do the right thing. This cure needs to happen. Unfortunately for her, Joel has already been in this situation before, and with the way it went last time, he was not going to let it go the same way twice. He shows her and equally anyone who gets in their way no mercy and leaves the facility with Ellie. The next time we see Joel and Ellie, he is driving and she is waking up in the back of the vehicle. Asking what happened. He weaves her a tale about how there were dozens of others and they have all been trying to find a cure with each one of them and it hasn't come to fruition and that the Fireflies have given up on finding a cure at all, unable to tell her what really happened. You're right now, Swear Bell, to me. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. I could honestly continue on for hours and hours and sift through the, all of the life lessons that you could really get out of such an emotionally driven story. But at the end of the day, what triumphs everything is love. And I believe that that's one of the biggest lessons to be taken from this story. A huge shout out and thank you to all the people that I stole from and for everyone who listened all the way through this thing. Thank you so much. And in the words of the great Brian W. Foster, don't forget to love each other. Take it easy, guys.